All right, I know what you're going to say. Why did you stop? Why didn't you play the solo all the way through? Well, I'm going to teach this solo in a few different parts. Today's lesson is just part one. It's my favorite part of the solo because I love that droning thing that he's doing over that A minor chord. And that's how I like to learn and that's how I like to teach. Small chunks, easily digestible. You'll have a video that's not 25 or 30 minutes long to navigate through. I'm thinking of you guys. Yeah, trust me. In a recent comment, someone called me the working man's guitar teacher and man, I'm flattered by that title. I will wear it proudly and uh, maybe I'll use it from here on out. You know, so if you watch the video for the Cold Shot Rhythm lesson, I talked about a few pedals that really helped me achieve that sound. One of them, importantly, was the Digitech drop pedal that allowed me to detune my guitar in half steps so I could really match the record, whether I'm playing with Stevie Ray Vaughan or Hendrix or Van Halen or anyone that tunes a half step flat. But since I'm now the working man's guitar teacher, I thought I'd introduce you to a very inexpensive pedal for the working man's guitar player. It is the Behringer TO-800. Check this thing out. This is a green overdrive pedal, so you can imagine what it's modeled after. That's right, it's a Tube Screamer style circuit, and it sounds really good. Here's the kicker, I bought it for 40 bucks. You know, I've owned a handful of Behringer products over the years, but it was always on the pro audio side. Stuff for the studio, mixer, live sound type stuff. I never checked out any of their guitar equipment until I watched the JHS show and Josh introduced me and the world to these inexpensive Behringer pedals that sound really great and they're direct clones to a lot of our favorite pedals. So if you're looking for some budget pedals under a hundred bucks, check these out because they actually sound really good. And if you're just going to be playing at home and you're not, you know, stage diving onto your pedals and really beating them up, um, these are going to be a pretty solid investment. Uh, if you just want to dip your toe into the water of a tube screamer, they make a killer fuzz pedal. A lot of their stuff is, you know, part for part, a clone of what they're trying to sound like. All right, I'll demo this pedal a little bit for you. And of course, I'll teach part one of the cold shot solo. And if you want to check out the rhythm lesson for this song, I'll put the link in the description. You'll also get a link for free tabs and tracks because I'm the working man's guitar teacher. I want to help you out. If you're digging the channel, you like the lessons, you like the content, hit that subscribe button below. Ring the bell so you know when I put up new content. I put new videos out every week. We have a lot of fun here, so I hope you stick around and I hope to see you on another video. Let's dive in to the Cold Shot solo part one. I love this solo so much. And we're gonna play this inexpensive Behringer Tube Screamer style circuit. It's the TO-800 Vintage Tube Overdrive. It's really vintage sounding, not so vintage looking, but I think you'll dig it. All right, let's jump in. Okay, let's dive into the lesson here. This is the first part of the cold shot solo. We're gonna break it up over a few videos. I think it's gonna work out better for you that way. I'm sure there'll be someone saying, why didn't you just teach the whole lesson in the video? Can't please everybody. Trust me, I've tried. It's an uphill battle. Let's play guitar. Uh, so really, we wanna make sure that we're focusing in this sort of A minor pentatonic region of the guitar. But what we're gonna do is something really fun right off the bat. What I want you to do is kind of bar this little A minor chord right here. So there we are, fifth fret, first, second, and third strings, pretty easy. Now, what I want you to do is get used to playing that with your pick and your second and third fingers. This could be a great intro to hybrid picking. I get asked about hybrid picking all the time. This is a great way to start it just by playing something that's not too difficult, okay? So play that, get your hands used to it. Sorry, I'll try not to look away too much. I'm making sure that my guitar is in focus for you guys. So what Stevie Ray does is he does this great drone thing. And when I heard this, I had to play it immediately. I had to learn it immediately because I loved it. He does this in the beginning. Now, what I like to do is my hands aren't as big as others. So I like to use my pinky and I'll put my pinky on the third string D right there. But there is more strength attached to the third finger. 
but I don't like to move my hand. And it's a little awkward feeling if I move my third finger like that. So I like to have this. And you can do it a number of different ways. I've watched several live performances and he, he plays it slightly differently every time. But this is a really great way to kind of get started with hybrid picking and to attack the, the sound that he's going for. So if we're here, one, two, three, four, one. Three, four, one. Three, four, one. After he does that, and you're making sure the whole time that, that those top strings are ringing out. And when you really, to, to get the sound, I don't want to gloss over any real finer points. Notice how I kind of, when I play that, I get to that note with a slide, and then my hands will slowly lift up because I want that sort of muted sound. We talked about this in the rhythm video. We're just kind of lifting your fingers off the fretboard creates a nice muting for you. He does it here as well. And you can kind of play around with how long you leave your hands on the fingerboard to, to make the notes ring out longer or be muted. So this is the, the general concept of the first part. Three, four, one. Three, four, one. Three, four, one. And after you play that, you're going to go to the fifth string, and, uh, sorry, fourth string, seventh and fifth fret. And that's just A, G, A. Then you're going to pick and bar that same A minor triad. Pinky. Third finger. Then he'll actually play a bend. Now what I like to do here is I want to make that bend strong, so I'll put my second finger behind the third finger. Third finger is the target note on the D third string seventh fret. But I'll keep my hybrid picking working. I'll play a major triad like I did. <laughs> it's happy cold shot, warm shot. <laughs> so the whole thing. So this is a really fun move. In the tab, you'll see that it's a whole step bend, but it's not, it's just the way that Guitar Pro wrote it out. But it's more like a half step or even a quarter step bend because he's really working on trying to get that flat five blue note. So we have from the beginning, This is tough for a lot of folks when you're first getting started to get this finger independence happening, to get this finger to, hands to lay down and get one thing to do one thing, one finger to do one thing and another one to do another. A lot of people have trouble with like bends like that because you have to have some really nice finger independence. So let's take that piece again from the top slowly. A one, two, a one, two, three, four, rest. I think he actually does that too. Back down to the G. If I play it fast, I'll remember. Yeah, it's kind of like an imply. Look, he'll go and not really play that G full force. Okay, so think about that as chunk one. Now, I had to remember these in little pieces, so I hope you do too. So then he abandons the hybrid thing. So he'll go. Now he'll go to more of a double stop feel. So here, you want to go more to that sort of B minor triad idea. Again, I'm just, just kind of implying the B minor. 
And if you hit the top string, the B, that's okay. He does sometimes, but it's not, uh, it's not a complete science. <laughs> But you want to get used to playing in a pentatonic scale and grabbing these double stops and going for broke. It works for Ch Keith Richards and Chuck Berry. And of course it works for Stevie Ray Vaughan. So that's the next phrase where he'll go. So how do you practice this? Well, you want to make sure, just get used to doing that. You hear how it's the meat of that riff, right? You know. And when you're bending it, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is all about a vibe, you know, three, four, one. You know, that kind of thing. Slinky, it's smooth, it's not perfect. That's what's great about it. So the second piece, let's walk it back, now starts on this double stop. take that much. Second and third strings are your primary uh, strings to work on. Push it to get almost like a quarter step in. It's not a half step. It's just kind of almost a half step. And release it to that uh, A minor triad bar there. And just double it. Do it again. Now we're going to go. So that little pull off there is tricky because it's it's uh, implied, it's delicate, it's not really aggressive and, and obvious. It's not like that. And you might attack that this way, you might pull off. And then your right hand, watch my right hand. It stops it from ringing. Without the right hand, it would just ring, you know. So we have from the top, two, three, four, one. And he finishes off that phrase. Just again with the G, A, G. Then the third piece of the double stop, he doesn't toggle at all. He stays right on the seventh fret. And this is cool because you can get a lot of mileage just out of moving the strings a quarter step. So again, grab that same double stop. It's kind of implying almost a B minor seven type of sound. Don't let that bog you down. But really the money notes are on the second and third strings. You're gonna go Like three things. And then end it that way. So ah, I'm gonna do that one more time. Now we come to the final part. to the beginning idea with the drone. So go back and look at the way I taught that. It's the same idea. Where those droning notes are happening over that and you're using your hybrid picking again. Very, very important. Classic Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff here coming up because it's going to go to the the uh, the D minor seven now, and I thought let's break there. We'll come back. There's going to be some notes that he some riffs he kind of intertwines in with the rhythm part, so it'll it'll flow naturally in part two. It'll be really nice. So to round that out, let's play this part right here. So that's going to walk up the pentatonic scale, and you're going to play A C bend on D third string. And then bar, go back to your bar, the fifth fret, first and second string. Always high. 
hybrid picking too. You could do a all downstrokes on this. And it would probably be cool and aggressive, you know, but for economy wise, I'm always kind of thinking about uh, alternate picking. Especially on that part. So the end of that little lick, bend on your eighth fret, uh, second string. Now a lot of these Stevie Ray Vaughan type of licks, as soon as you bend, you're off the you're off the string. So see, as soon as I bend here on the second string, I land on the A note, first string. That's the note I'm bending to when I play it. That's a huge thing for blues guitar. And then what I do is I play the A on the first string, then the E on the second string. You've heard that a bunch. All right, so in its entirety, here we go. Three, four, one. that you end right on that C note first string with a healthy dose of vibrato that you got to push up for because you're on the first string so that's going to be a little bit tricky Let's check out this little Behringer pedal here. This is the TO8. Let me get my hair out of my face. Hold on. Ah, haven't had a haircut in a while. You know, I mentioned earlier in the video that Josh Scott from JHS Pedals did a really great episode on the JHS show. That's hard to say fast. JHS show about the whole Behringer line. It's called What's the Deal with Behringer? He talked about how they're clones of Boss and Ibanez pedals and stuff like that. Uh, and this pedal right here is really doing the trick. I'm surprised at how great this thing is for 40-ish bucks or so. So I've got it set up sort of in the classic Stevie Ray Vaughan pushed amp sound. What that means is he's really pushing the front end of your amplifier when you have the volume up and the gain down. So I'm gonna turn it off and I'm just gonna play that same kind of shuffle idea. Let me play it a little better than that. Three, four. Super clean here, just on the neck position here on the Silver Sky. A little bit of reverb, that's it. So we kick in the pedal and it's going to give me not only that pronounced mid-range that we love from the Tube Screamer style circuit, but it's gonna push the amp a little harder. Sounds pretty great to me. The test is we're gonna start pushing the gain knob a little bit and just hear what it gives us. So I was monkeying around earlier with it and I got to about 
mean, that's a fun little pedal, right? I mean, for 40 bucks, you can get into Tube Screamer land, and it is legit. It really, really sounds great to my ears. I hope you like it too. And uh, I'll have a link below, like I said, that you can check it out for yourself. Uh, I found it online, just snagged it, had it in a couple days, and was having fun with it really quickly. If you're already a subscriber, thanks so much for joining me every week. Don't forget I do live streams on this channel once a week, every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Daylight Time. I don't know which one it is. I teach a lesson like this. We talk, we have fun. It's a really good time. I hope you join us. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, and stick around because part two and three for the Cold Shot Solo are coming up soon.